Hi, and welcome back to PAX Unplugged. Jason Levy with another interview for Dice Tower. I'm here with Ignacy Trebichek with Portal Games. Hello. Hello, how are you? Excellent. This is a um, big year for you. For you, you've done a lot of, you've had a lot of games come out. Um, one of the big ones is First Martians. You did an app for this, and it's been how different was it doing an app versus doing regular cards? I'm having a seminar about this in an hour, and uh, you know, it was uh, frustrating in the sense that the idea I came up with. I had to wait for the coders to make it real. Like, so it was delays over and over again because I had a cool idea for the event, cool idea for you know some twist in the mechanism. Then I had to explain it to the coders, wait two weeks until they do it, and then play test it. So of course, it was more difficult than doing only analog game. But on the other hand, it gave uh, tools to surprise players. And I know that there are some moments in the camp, especially in the campaign, that players not expecting what will happen because we put some super interesting twists in the game. Now, the interesting thing about it is you could add more and more. Are you planning to add more and more and more content as you go or is it, are you set with the content or what are you going to do in terms of the app world? Yeah, so since, since the release of the game, so it is like uh, two months ago, we already added the new scenario, we already added the new events. For the Christmas, there will be new scenario added. So basically, uh, every other week or every couple of weeks, uh, players see the little notification in the app that there is some new content and just update the app and they just download the new events and new adventures. Right now, as we are sending right here, uh, the BGG website, there is a contest for the fan created adventures and the best ideas from the fans will be once again uploaded to the app. So basically when you buy the game, the box says it includes 500 events and adventures. At this very moment, it already has about 550. In uh, six months, it will be 600, and then 700. It's a living board game, and uh, I think it's a super interesting concept for the all board games. Yeah, it is. I mean, when you came up with this, obviously you had done Robinson Caruso. Did you think, I want to now expand this and make it a living game? Yep, so now, in essence, we announced a special supporting app for Robinson Crusoe. You can download it. And in the app is exactly the case. You will find more events and more adventures. It's as simple as that. For me to you know, see it during the weekend or after hours and come up with the new ideas for the cards is a pleasure. I'm a designer. I love to design new cards. And then having a chance to just upload them to the app without manufacturing, without the logistics, shipping, just giving the content to the players is amazing. Yes, and you have another game that you've been working on that also uses an app, Detective. How far are you in that? We hope to finish the main thing till end of this year. So we are really, really finishing, finishing the stuff. And early next year, just editing, proofreading, proofreading, and then go to the print. So we are very advanced in this design. And yes, this is the game that uses the online and uses the Wikipedia and Google and all that kind of online resources. Because in this game, you are an investigator. You have to investigate the crime and players will use all the online resources they can to try to figure out what happened. So this game goes beyond an app and is using like real world internet as well. Yeah, you are, you are literally going to Wikipedia to double check some facts, which is amazing. I, I think so too. I mean, I love crime investigation and escape rooms and all sorts of things like this. And this seems like a mega sized version. Yeah, yep. uh, we, we, we feel in the company that we are providing experience like no other game did it before. Uh, we will know more when finally players will play, not only my playtesters, but at this point I'm super excited. Like literally, you are an investigator. You have to investigate and you have to find all the clues everywhere to figure out what happened. Yes, I, and I'm assuming for that you're also going to have many, many scenarios and you could add more cases and more things as you go? So yeah, basically the base game will have five missions, five scenarios. And if the game is popular, if we are right that this is an interesting engine, we will come up with the new cases and new scenarios because we are selling right now the base mechanism, the base engine of the game. And if people will like it, we will follow up with new missions. I have a strong feeling this is a very interesting system. It sounds like it. So I guess the key question for you is, are you planning to do any more games without an app? Because it seems like everything you're working on is an app now. Yeah, we for the next year for Essen, we will have... A, fantasy game, uh, sort of like 
inspired by Naroshima Hex, so the tile lying game, combat, uh, fantasy, and this is a classical cardboard game, no online stuff at this point, uh, so yes. Yeah, I mean, hearing that news, and, and you said Robinson Crusoe was going to have, so three of your games will now be big app games. Yep, yep. Uh, you know, I, I love my iPhone, I love my technology, I love the, all the tools that can make us even more happy with some experiences, yeah. Yes, I mean, I, I even play Nourishima Hex on, on the iPhone all the time. Yep, exactly. This is, everybody has an iPhone, everybody has a smartphone, and uh, we can use them to make a better experience, more interesting experience, like with the first mansions providing more content, like with Robinson Crusoe app providing more events and adventures, or like in Detective providing a real experience of being an investigator and going to Wikipedia and Google Maps. You know, you go to the Google Maps, seeing the street and thinking if it is possible what this guy is telling you because you see the map right now in the front of you in Google Maps. How cool is that? Yeah, it's very cool. I mean, do you think this is the future now of, of board games is combining them with apps more and more? I, I don't see that every board game in the future will have that feature, but I see that there is a, a genre of the game that uses the modern technology and is interesting. Like, this is one of many genres in the games and I'm super eager to see new games in this genre. Me too. So I, I can't finish this without talking about Alien Artifacts. Obviously, it's a new Portal game. It's kind of a tech, a tech building 4X game, but plays very simple with cards. Um, are you proud of this one? I'm super, super proud. This is a, another engine building game from our company. We did Imperial Cetras, we did 51st State, and now we have Alien Artifacts. Uh, it's complex, it's interesting, there's a lot of synergies, lots of ways to win the game. You can go for the technology, you can go for ATA, you can go mining the planets, all different uh, strategies, and it plays so quickly. Like, you have so many choices, you have a meaty game with a lot of choices, and yet it plays very quickly, like 45 minutes, 60 minutes. Uh, I'm super proud of this game. Yeah, it's been, it's been, like I said, it's been a good year for you between this and First Martians, and you've had a whole bunch of things come out. Thank you, thank you. And then uh, the apps in the future, I think, are going to be really exciting. For me, I'm looking forward to digging in there and playing detective and seeing, seeing all this happen. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I guess thank you so much for coming out here and uh, everything that you've been doing for the industry. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much. And of course, our, if you didn't know, our podcast as well. Tell us what's going on with the podcast. Uh, podcast. Mr. Steven Bonacor is at BGGCon. I'm here at Pax and Plax, so we are not recording new episode. But next week, when I'm back to Poland, once again I go to Skype. By the way, we have some Skype issues, but I'm going back to Skype to record uh, a new episode with uh, Mr. Bonacor from Pax and Plax. We are recording vlog as usual. Portal Games Informant. You can go to YouTube. We are probably already on YouTube right now, so you can go to Portal Games Informant. We have a vlog from Pax and Plax and other places. So yes, we are trying to show the industry from behind the scenes, which is always interesting. Yeah, it is. I mean, to be able to um, come in and show all of that, and obviously it involves your whole social media presence and your whole computer tech presence. Yep, yep. I'm very active on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. I started recording Anchor podcast, uh, some small things, and the most important for us is uh, Portal Games Informant, which is a vlog about our company. Each week there's a video about eight minutes long presenting the company, how we work, how we develop games, how we play tales, like interesting stuff. Yeah, I mean, I mean, not a lot of publishers will show you development of games, so it's very cool that you do that. Yeah, thank you. And um, thank you so much for coming on, Ignacy, and we always look forward to having you. My pleasure, thank you. Once again, Ignacy Trebicek, this is Jason Levine with another Dice Tower interview from here at PAX Unplugged.